Welcome to module seven of our financial accounting course. This module is about inventory. You might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, didn't we already do inventory? Wasn't that module six? Well, module six, we learned a lot about inventory. We talked about purchasing it, uh, maybe at a discount, selling perhaps with a discount. We talked about returning inventory and all sorts of other inventory issues. In this module, we dive even a little bit deeper. And to explain the fundamental issue we're exploring this module, uh, I'm going to give an example. And if you're sort of looking for a big picture topic, maybe you're coming at this from your uh, your own textbook, we're, we're going to be talking about FIFO, LIFO, weighted average inventory costing methods here. So inventory and cost of goods sold is the big topic. Uh, so let's jump into what this means and why it's an issue. So let's say we're Walmart and we are, you know, a, a retailer like Walmart anyway, and we, uh, uh, I want to zoom in on a specific pair of socks that Walmart might sell. So, you know, white Hanes, uh, you know, just uh, athletic socks. I'll draw one sock. I'm not going to draw two. I'll draw two. Why not? Uh, there's the second sock in the pair. And uh, we're Hanes and this costs us. Uh, or not we're Hanes, we're Walmart, and this costs us $2 to buy from our supplier Hanes, and we're going to turn around and sell it to our customer for $5 to, for the pair of socks, and we're going to make a tidy gross profit of $3. And in fact, let's just do the journal entries of that simple transaction. So uh, we buy the socks from Hanes, debit inventory socks, uh, and again, it would be more specific than that. We would say, you know, these are white socks. This is, you know, their large size and whatever other details we would need to distinguish because we carry so many other pairs of white socks. We would uh, have more detail tied to it than that. But anyway, we debit inventory socks, two bucks. And credit uh, accounts payable because, of course, Walmart doesn't pay cash for much. And then we turn around and the next day we sell the socks. So our customer comes in and they buy the socks. So we go, okay, our customer pays us cash, five bucks. There's sales rev of five bucks. We're not worrying about any discounts or anything like this that we talked about last chapter. And of course, there's two pieces to this entry. Uh, one to record, hey, there's money coming into the till, the five dollar amount, but also two, two dollars worth of our socks, two dollars worth of our assets walks out the door with our customers. So we credit inventory for two bucks. And the debit here is to cost of goods sold two dollars and that's that special expense account and we can see sales minus cogs equals gross profit also called gross margin and our gross profit on this deal was five minus two we made three bucks in I'm leaning out of the way of my three we made three dollars in the sale and and that's certainly reflected in our accounting information so we've uh, done it and there is a simple example. Now, here's where things get a little bit more complicated, and this is going to be the focus of our chapter. So let's assume again Walmart buys that $2 pair of socks. And let's say it's January 1st. So January 1, Walmart buys a pair of socks. They go debit inventory. I'm not going to say socks, uh, but you know, you know it is socks. $2 credit uh, AP, $2. Let's assume that those socks do not sell, and on January 2nd, Walmart buys another pair of socks. Now, of course, Walmart wouldn't buy one pair of socks. They would buy thousands of pairs of socks at a time, but for this example, we're just going to buy one at a time. So on January 2nd, they call Hanes, and Hanes says, hey, you know what? The price of socks has gone up. The price of cotton has gone up for us, and therefore, we're gonna, we got to charge you $2.05. Uh, for that pair of socks and Walmart uh, eats it and they, they buy the socks for 205. Again, Walmart probably fights over this because Walmart is known as a, a pretty tough company, a pretty tough customer. Uh, they, they will be very demanding. Uh, but anyway, let's assume Walmart goes along and buys the socks for 205. On January 3rd, uh, Walmart buys another pair of socks, and Hanes says, this is out of control, these cotton prices. And in fact, we got to charge you, uh, let's say, $2.16 for our socks now. And so Walmart goes, ugh, okay, 
and debit inventory two dollars and sixteen cents credit ap two dollars and sixteen cents okay so that's all my sort of setup here january 4th a customer comes in and they buy the socks and so we have our normal sales right and then look listen uh, to be abundantly clear these are all the same 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 skew same type of sock right they come in the same package they have the same everything associated with it and from the customer's perspective they all have the same price tag on them the price is five dollars so the customer comes in they see this pile of three socks on display in the store three pairs of socks i should say and they buy a pair of socks so uh and, and of course they all cost the customer five dollars so walmart receives five dollars cash they have five dollars in sales revenue the question is what is the cost of goods sold in other words how much inventory walked out the door with our customer what was the value of the inventory that walked out the door with the customer and this is the fundamental uh, question of module seven here and the answer is it depends and it depends on the company's accounting method there's really four accounting methods we need to be worried about the first method is called fifo fifo is uh short for i, was, I should have left more space here first in first out fifo and what does fifo mean FIFO is, means the first one we bought, that's the first one we sold. So it doesn't matter what actual pair the customer grabbed, like the top one, the bottom one, or the one in the middle. Uh, first in, first out means the oldest inventory, that's the inventory that's sold. So when I debit COGS credit inventory under FIFO, I'm going to debit COGS credit inventory for two bucks. So under FIFO, COGS equals two bucks. Um, now there's another method last in first out now last in first out is very unpopular around the world in fact it's not allowed under most accounting systems except for there's a few notable exceptions the main notable exception is our cousins south of the border i'm in canada south of the border my american cousins are allowed to use lifo there are some specific rules around it but i don't think it's very good method to be honest with you uh but that said real companies use it so you american students will have to know what it is i don't require my students to know what it is but you, you know just eyeballing it you should be able to figure out the last in first out means the last one we bought this two dollar sixteen is going to be our cogs our cogs will be two dollars sixteen if you're curious about this maybe leave a comment below why i don't like lifo um and maybe i'll make a video about it down the road but it's probably a five to ten minute talk that doesn't really fit here uh, but standard setters around the world pretty much agree that lifo is a bit uh goofy uh anyway uh okay so that's lifo uh looking at number three we have what's called the weighted average method. This can sometimes be called the average cost method. The, the word average is going to be uh, included somewhere in, in a third method. And as you might suggest, you take an average. It's not a simple average, it's, a, it's called a weighted average, and we'll learn what that means in future videos around weighted average. But here we'll, we'll take the average of these three. So if I add two, well, let me just do this in my calculator. 2 plus 205 plus 2.16, 621 divided by 3 is 207, $2.07. $2 I tried to do a weighted average. The reason I chose 216 here was because I thought, oh, the average is going to be an even number. Uh, I just wanted to make an even number. Of course, in real life, the weighted average doesn't have to work out to an even number. That was just my choice. The final method here is called specific unit id specific unit identification specific unit method something like this um what does specific unit id say well it says listen if we know what pair of socks the customer took like literally physically 
what pair of socks they took from the shelf. Did they take the one that was on top? Did they take, did they, like when I'm buying milk, I always reach around and grab milk from the back because that's how I roll. Did they grab the milk from the back or did they grab the milk from the middle or did they grab the milk from the front? If I'm able to keep track of that, why don't I just say the actual cost of the good that I sold, right? I know which one I sold. Why don't I just say, okay, well, they bought milk number two or they built bought pair of socks number two, therefore it's 205. Or they bought pair of socks number one, therefore it's two bucks. Or they bought pair of socks number three, therefore it's 216. Whichever one they bought, that's my cog. So in this case, cogs would be uh, two or 205 or 216, whichever one was purchased. Now, in this case, we, we aren't sure. And if we're not sure, then we can't use that method. Now, where would we be sure? Well, if I were a Toyota car dealership and I had four gray Toyota Corollas that were the same trim package, same everything, I would darn sure know which one my customer bought. It would have a vehicle ID number. I would keep track of each one separately. Or if I were an antique seller and I had, or uh, maybe even a Let's say I was one of these fancy painting auction houses, right? And I was selling like paintings. Uh, I would know which was which. I wouldn't say, oh, well, it's the average cost of my Picassos and I'll just average that out. No, I would keep track specifically each unit I would track separately. So specific unit ID, typically for bigger ticket items like pairs of socks, you would just probably lump together. It's not worth the effort of tracking them separately. Although we could, we probably wouldn't. But with uh, uh, sort of large or unique items, we might track them all separately. So that's a big focus of this module is just figuring out the cost of the inventory we sold. And the reality is we are allowed to use several different methods and you will be responsible, I'm sure in your class, to understand several different methods of tracking inventory. All right, I can't wait to get started. I'll see you in the next video.